Call of Duty Zombies has always been a place where creativity thrived, a place where a unique blend of horror, strategy and teamwork came together. From camping on the catwalk on their research to the underground secrets of Mork City in Shadows of Evil, Zombies has always captivated players for years, with its unique atmosphere. But as the franchise evolves, Call of Duty that is, we're seeing more and more of Warzone's influence creeping into our beloved Zombies experience. The question is, is this shift a good thing for the future of Zombies, or are we losing what made it special in the first place? Look, Warzone's success is undeniable. As a free-to-play battle royale with a massive player base, it's become a cornerstone to the Call of Duty franchise. I know that. But with this success comes the desire to create a unified experience across all modes. This has led to what I call the Warzoneification of Call of Duty, right? Where everything from the HUD to the game mechanics feel like it's been streamlined to fit Warzone's model. But what does this mean for the Zombies community? On one hand, a unified experience makes sense. For Activision, it's a strategic move to keep players engaged across multiple modes, making it easier to jump from Zombies to Warzone and back. The shared HUD, similar assets and even the way perks and weapons are handled all contribute to this feeling of continuity, and for new players this is a huge plus. It's less intimidating to try out Zombies when it doesn't feel so different from Warzone or multiplayer, right? And let's not forget that more players in Warzone equals to more potential for microtransactions, battle pass sales and in-game currency purchases. Let's also talk about the consequences, right? For many players, Zombies and multiplayer modes have started to feel more like a side mode for Warzone, a place to farm camos, level up weapons and unlock attachments that are then used in Warzone. This shift in focus can make Zombies feel like a lesser experience and more like a means to an end. The thrill of discovering new easter eggs, mastering map-specific strategies and immersing yourself in a unique world is being overshadowed by the good old grind for Warzone rewards. In many ways, Zombies is losing its identity, becoming another cog in a Warzone machine. Another big part of this whole change is the shift from paid DLC to free-to-play model with seasonal updates. Back in the day, zombie maps were locked behind the paid DLC meaning only players who bought the Season Pass or individual map packs could experience them. Some argue that this system created a sense of urgency for developers to deliver high-quality content, since players were paying for it directly. Today, free content updates are the norm, which has its own sets of pros and cons. On the one hand, free updates means that every player has access to the new content without the barrier of paid DLC, which is great for keeping the community together and ensuring that everyone can play the latest maps. However, some argue that the quality of the Zombies content has suffered as a result. Without the direct revenue from map packs, there might be less pressure on the developers to be innovative or to take risks. Instead, the focus shifts to retaining players within the ecosystem, keeping them engaged enough to buy the battle pass and to spend money on microtransactions. While I personally don't believe that paid DLC is the answer, after all, it fragmented the community and made it harder for everyone to experience the full game, there's something to be said for the urgency and creativity that came with developing premium content. But let's be real, Activision is making more money now than ever before with the microtransactions and that brings its own sets of priorities. But for the hardcore Zombies fans, this unification comes at a cost. The charm of Zombies has always been its uniqueness, each map a world on its own. With a distinct HUD compared to multiplayer, a dedicated crew and mechanics that felt tailored to that specific experience. And with maps like Liberty Falls, we are seeing the downsides of this shift. Special enemies and mechanics are being reused across different maps again diminishing the sense of discovery and uniqueness that older maps gave us. For example, we can see the spider vermin boss type enemy that we've seen on Terminus Island already, but it's here again, making it less special. It absolutely made sense that we see a spider type boss enemy on a remote island map, right? But why do we see it again here on this small town? Another boss enemy that reappears in this game is the Mega Abomination that first got introduced in Modern Warfare Zombies last year. 
And I totally get it, they might have developed the Mega Abomination in the first place for Black Ops 6, but they also put it into Modern Warfare Zombies, so it's nothing special anymore, it's not a new enemy type, right? And that's not to mention that we've seen Manglers across the last, maybe, seven maps that released in Zombies, so there's a lot to criticize about boss enemies. So I was really happy that we have seen Spider-type enemies on Terminus, but then disappointed that we have seen them again on Liberty Falls, making it less unique in comparison to the other map. So Liberty Falls, the map itself, isn't bad. It has a lot going for it, I'm sure, but when you realize that it's sharing the same special enemies with Terminus and doesn't even have a set crew, it starts to feel less like its own experience and more like another chapter in a Warzone-themed book. Even a hut is the same across these maps, which, while efficient, strips away the personality that made each zombies map feel like a new adventure. And I know that we can customize the hut this time with Black Ops 6, but we are only allowed to use special presets of hut elements, like we can change the order of like the minimap, the weapon, ammo and special ability and stuff like that, but they are all not zombified hut elements, like they don't have a zombies theme behind it. I really think Black Ops 3 did it best. It had a unique HUD for the Zombies mode, and it made it more distinct to the multiplayer mode in this game. You could argue that Black Ops 4 went over the board with it and gave us too much on the HUD, like there was too much going on, and Cold War, Vanguard and Modern Warfare Zombies all had a more Warzone-like HUD. But to be honest, the HUD is only one part of the big picture. Sure, it helps to define a Zombies experience, it really helps with immersion and stuff like that, but other factors are more important, like the gameplay, the main quest designs, the difficulty maybe, and we're really gonna have to wait and see how things are gonna turn out. Like we have to wait until the game releases to make up our judgement of this new chapter of the zombie storyline, right? They might deliver in other aspects of the game, like good easter egg quests or main quests. And hey, who knows, maybe Liberty Falls is even bigger than we think. There might be a whole underground area under the map that we haven't gotten access yet for the gameplay event. I'm sure they are holding back on a lot of things to keep up surprises in the end. Like one of the main big problems for me in Cold War Zombies was that the round based zombies experiences all were like taking place in a facility type area. Right, we went from one facility map to the next one and while it made sense for the story and the setting, it also was nothing in comparison to some older maps like the Eisendrache or Setsubo no Shima or Gord Krovi. Although you could argue that they were still on a facility that happened to be on a medieval castle or a remote island. <laughs> but it still felt different. There was a unique touch to it and a unique atmosphere and aesthetic that's missing in the newer games. I really hate to say it because I'm a fan of the newer games and I like a lot of the changes the newer games made, but in that regard, the older games are still superior. So where does this leave us? The war zonification of Call of Duty isn't going away. It's clear that this is the direction the franchise is heading. But that doesn't mean that Zombies has to lose what made it special in the first place. There's a balance to be struck here. We can appreciate the modern conveniences and the appeal to new players, while still advocating for the uniqueness and creativity that have always defined zombies in the first place. I just hope that the future maps find this balance and keep this uniqueness of zombies alive. What do you think? Is the war zonification in zombies a step forward or a step back? I think I know the answer, but let me know in the comments below. And yeah, thanks for watching, I see you in the next video, don't forget to like and subscribe if that's something you're up for, and yeah, I see you next time, thanks for watching.